It's been a minute since I did a proper gaming PC build here on the channel. In fact, the last one was a few months ago when I put together a system for my racing simulator. And to be honest, that system has been great and I use it almost every day. This build is gonna be a little bit different. In fact, this is actually my editing PC and we're gonna be upgrading this with a whole host of new components. Let's get to work. Looking to grab a Windows 10 license at a crazy discount that you could upgrade to Windows 11? Head over to VIP SCD key at the links below and use promo code BPS25 at checkout to score a sweet deal on Windows 10, Windows 11, and Microsoft Office. Once you've completed your purchase, just head over to your user center, hit the green button to view your code, copy and paste it into your Windows activation settings, and away you go. Check out VIP SCD key at the links in the video description. If you guys are new here, thank you so much for stopping by and checking us out. This is the BPS Customs YouTube channel. We do things like this, where we build gaming PCs, we do how-tos, product reviews. So if you like that kind of stuff, make sure that you get subscribed down below and also consider hitting that like button and or the notification icon. That kind of stuff really goes a long way in helping the channel out. So thank you in advance. So why take a perfectly good, perfectly functioning, very powerful system like this one right here, with an i9-12900K and an RTX 3090 and butcher it to make something new? Well, the RTX 4090 and 13900K both should provide some noticeable gains in performance in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is the thing that I do most with this system. Not to mention it also should provide faster handbrake transcoding and yeah, better performance in games, which I do get to do every once in a while. So we're gonna be doing some A-B testing here. I've already laid down some baseline scores with this system in Adobe Premiere exporting, handbrake transcoding, Modern Warfare 2, Cyberpunk 2077, and F1 22. And then we're gonna compare once we do the rebuild, see which one is better and see if it was actually worth it for me to make this upgrade. Let's go over the components that we're gonna be using here. And let's start with the one that we're gonna be swapping over from this system, and that's the motherboard. The motherboard in here is ASUS's Z690 formula, and with a BIOS update, directly supports the 13900K, and that's already been done, so I don't have to worry about that. The Z690 formula board provides two things that I can't get on any other board within reason. So the first thing is that it's completely white. Now that might not seem like the most important thing, however, when we're going for an aesthetically pleasing build and an all white case, that is definitely something that I wanna consider. The second thing is that the IO on this board is just crazy good. It's got 12 total USB ports and I use every single one of them in my office. So I have all kinds of peripherals connected here that I use all the time. So I wanted to be able to maintain that. So all it's all white. It's actually built really well. It's got a really strong VRM uh, and also crazy amount of IO. So we're gonna stick with this board and just transfer it to this system using the 13900K. Now, the 13900K in and of itself is slightly controversial because of the presence of AMD's new components. So the 7950X is a very, very powerful chip. It's also a very strong consideration for somebody doing content creation because it has so many cores. But in the thing that I do most, which is edit in Adobe Premiere, this is still the best. I would love to give AMD a shot in this system. And in fact, I have used an AMD build many times in the past from Threadripper to the 5950X. But right now with Intel's newest Raptor Lake chips, these still score the best out of any other components when it comes to Adobe Premiere exporting and timeline scrubbing. And that's really the thing that I need to focus on. So this is what we're going with. Now, in combination with the RTX 4090, which obviously, as you guys know, is an insane monster of a gaming graphics card, we're gonna be pulling a significant amount of power here. So in order to accommodate that, we're moving up to the Dark Power Pro 12 1500 watt unit. Now, how are we gonna fit that in this case? Well, we're not. We're actually gonna be swapping over from the Lee and Lee O11 Dynamic Mini to the Air Mini. Now the Air Mini makes a couple of minor improvements over this case, including the fact that you can use power supplies up to 200 millimeters in length, which is what this one is. So we're gonna be pushing the limits of that case, which is not here on the table, it's, it's actually down there. But 
Hopefully it all fits. Hopefully we can get everything in there without a problem and we have enough power for our entire system's needs. Also, while we're here, might as well touch on the cables. These are from Cable Mod. I configured a really funky purple, pink, blue color combination. It's almost incidentally just cyberpunk, but I wasn't going for that. It, I just thought it looked cool. And I think in an all white build, which is this, this is going to be, I think this is gonna be a really neat kind of color pop. So speaking of color, Let's talk about these fans. These are Lian Li's Unifan SL Infinity 120s. And we have three packs of them. So we're gonna populate the entire interior of the case, including swapping over some of the fans from our Kraken Z73 cooler to the Lian Li fans. Now, this does mean that we're gonna need two separate control softwares. The Z73 requires cam. The Lian Li uh, fans require the Lian Li software, which I forget the name of. That's okay. Uh, I'm willing to make that sacrifice because I want to have the same fans throughout the system and I didn't necessarily want to have the NZXT fans in one spot and then the Lian Lee fans in one spot. So we're going to have to try to figure that out on the software side of things, but hopefully, fingers crossed, it all works out. Another thing we're going to be upgrading is the memory. Now we've got four 16 gig sticks here of Corsair Vengeance RGB. This is DDR5. 5600 speed. Now, while you can get faster memory than this, and if you're building an AMD system, 6000 plus is probably the target you wanna aim for. With an Intel build, 5600 is gonna be plenty fast, and it's gonna be an upgrade over what we have in this build right here, which is DDR5 5200 from G-Skill. Now, it's got, not gonna make a huge difference, but if you can increase the performance, it seems like a good idea to do so, especially when you're upgrading everything else about your build. And it's also gonna match aesthetically, which is a theme that you guys might notice here. We're also gonna be upgrading our storage. Now Corsair sent over their MP600 Pro XT SSD with read speeds up to 7,100 megabytes per second. It's a Gen 4 drive. And Lexar provided this bad boy right here. It's a two terabyte drive, their NM800 Pro with read speeds up to 7,500 megabytes per second. Now. I don't know that I'm necessarily gonna notice any significant difference in my daily use between the drives that are in here and the drives we're up upgrading to. However, when we're dealing with scratch disks and quick access to files or large video files while doing video editing, I think having faster storage is just gonna be better and that's what we're rolling with right here. So that is all the parts we're dealing with here today. I'm actually really excited to get going on this. I'm gonna actually do this build off camera. Uh, because I also want to touch on some performance, which we're going to have time for a little bit later. So in order to save a little bit of time in this video, make sure that it's not, you know, 20 minutes long or something like that. I'm going to put this together, then we're going to test it, and we're going to talk about the performance when we come back in just a minute. So let's go. A few moments later. All right, guys, check this out. This is not something that I had uh, intended on encountering here with this build, because that is the old system down there, mostly taken apart. And as you can see, there's a 360 millimeter radiator there that I use. This is a, oh, well, there's a 360 millimeter uh, French Bulldog. But this is an MSI uh, Core Liquid Mag 360. I think that's what it's called. Uh, but in any event, 360 millimeter radiator, radiator Ace Tech based. This is the same case essentially, except this is the air version. And they've modified it so that it accepts ATX motherboards without having a little extender on there. And as a result, they have now slightly shifted around the interior of the case. Well, a result of that, and something that I guess I didn't consider because I thought it, the compatibility would be the same, is that 360 millimeter radiators no longer fit in this case. They don't fit even lengthwise. If you look here, lengthwise, we're pressed up against the back here and it sticks out the front. So even if I can manage to mash it in width-wise or height-wise, whatever, whatever this dimension would be, it doesn't fit lengthwise. So that means that I'm gonna have to come up with another solution for cooling here. And with the 13900K, that's not really an option. So I'm gonna have to change the case. 346 minutes later. Well, today was certainly an adventure as you can probably tell by the giant amorphous blurry blob next to me. This system caused me more problems and took me longer to build than almost any PC in the last several years. You guys saw the issue that I had with the case and 
as you may be able to tell. The reason why you can't see the system right now is because the case that I ended up having to put it in is not yet released. So yes, this case right here is under embargo, unfortunately, so I cannot show you all kinds of sexy and cool B-roll. Trust me, it looks pretty cool, uh, but uh, I can't really talk very much about it, unfortunately. What I can talk to you about, though, is the performance of the system now that we've made the upgrades and the changes. Now, that's not only going to be performance upgrades because we're improving the CPU and the GPU, but also thermal upgrades. Without giving away too much, the case that I've put this in is much more open than the previous iteration of this system. I think I would have had a similar-ish experience had I been able to cram these components into the O11 Air Mini, but this case is gonna do basically the same thing, and it also is a little bit bigger. So it's gonna provide a little bit better airflow and not compress all the heat into one small space. So I think that's contributing to the fact that we're getting way better thermal. So here actually is what I'm talking about. Under load while gaming, we saw a significant improvement in both GPU and CPU temperatures, along with a similar level of noise. So I don't have to worry about an increasingly noisy system to get those lower temperatures. It's just a natural byproduct of having better airflow in the system. Also, I did achieve my goal of getting better performance in these productivity applications that I use all the time. So that's Adobe Premiere and Handbrake. Here is the productivity results from the testing that I did on this system versus the original system. You can see we had a significant improvement over a minute faster in our Adobe Premiere Pro export and over two minutes faster in the handbrake transcoding test. Now, one minute or two minutes here and there might not sound like a huge deal to a lot of people, but we're talking 20 to 33% improvements in these tasks. And when you're talking large video files and doing these things in batches over and over and over again, that's actually going to provide you with a significant improvement in quality of life. And you don't have to sit there and watch the system render for you know, large amounts of time. This is going to make my life way, way better when working on these projects. And what about gaming? Well, obviously the 4090 is gonna put in some serious work when it comes to Modern Warfare 2, Cyberpunk, and F122. So here are the results of those tests and the improvements you can see is almost inconceivable. When you're just talking hardware that's about a year apart, I'm talking double the performance from generation over generation. That's pretty nuts. And it's definitely something that is going to be noticeable when I actually find some time to game. Now, one thing that I didn't really go into beyond the case itself was the additional difficulty that I had building this system. The first iteration that I built here included the Lee & Lee O11 Air Mini and that Z690 formula board. Well, obviously, as you guys saw, that didn't end up working out because of the size of the cooler. So that whole entire system was transferred over to this case where it did fit, but I was having some incredibly frustrating stability issues with the system as it was built. I don't know if it was a BIOS issue because I had updated the BIOS to support the 13th gen processor in the Z690 board, but I couldn't have the system running for more than five minutes before it crashed. Uh, if I were to initialize the control software for the Lian Li fans, the entire system would freeze up. If I tried to change anything in BIOS, the system would hard reset. I don't know what the issues were, but I'm pretty sure they were related to the motherboard because what I did was I changed the motherboard out for a Z790 Strix board. And that seems to really have solved all of the problems. So in the end, I guess I didn't really need to take anything out of the old system. I could have just kept that one the way it was and built this one separately because every single thing in here is new. We have new motherboard, new processor, new cooler, new power supply, new graphics card, new storage, new memory, and of course, this new case, which I unfortunately can't yet show you. Now, I did reach out to the company who sent this to me on a weekend, so thank you very much for answering your phone about this case and if I could maybe tease it for you or anything like that, and the answer was uh, probably not. 
So you're just gonna have to stay tuned to the channel because I am gonna do a full video on this case. It is actually pretty special. Uh, and that's gonna be coming, let's just say soon. I can't really give you a date on it either, but it's this year, how about that? Uh, so stay tuned to the channel if you guys want to check out what this case actually is and what the finished product looks like because it's pretty awesome. Uh, also, if you like this kind of video, let me know down below what other kind of builds you want me to do uh, or anything else you might want to see on the channel. I'm always open to some suggestions. And uh, I guess that's it for this video, guys. This project, even though it took a long time, ended up being a huge success. And I think this build is going to be awesome for me moving forward. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, I will see you next time, hopefully with a little bit easier of a video to make.